Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 2 of our War in the East 2 Let's Play series, 1941 campaign as the Soviets. Um, in this episode, we're going to be continuing on with turn 1 of the scenario, and our focus is going to be on fortifying, not fortifying, that's far too generous of a term, uh, retreating, withdrawing with great haste, um, our ground elements to their appropriate defensive locations uh, in the northern half of our front. So we're going to be focusing on uh, the Leningrad front and the Moscow front. We will also later in episode three, I'm hoping, cover the Voronezh front and then the Rostov front. So those are going to be kind of the four fronts that we'll continue to, to term here. Um, and, and we're going to go over Leningrad and Moscow today. Her first order of business will be going through and retreating armies that are currently not behind enemy lines to the appropriate positions or generally the direction I want them to go to start digging in and fortifying themselves. And then after we've done those actions, we may then take a look to say, okay, in these two pockets where the Germans have encircled multiple armies of our forces, uh, what do we do with them? Uh, what, what is the plan? So that's going to be the focus for this episode. Like I said, in episode three, we'll focus on the Voronezh front and the Rostov front and withdrawing to the appropriate positions in each of those theaters. I know I covered this in the last episode, but for the first couple of episodes, I'm going to keep reiterating this of just kind of where we see our front lines and where we think they're going to be. So I'm going to pull up a map here for everyone to see. So here we go. So in blue, these are kind of the first positions we want to establish. They're not going to be a static front line, but they're the first positions we want to have some type of concentration of forces. So up here near Talinen, we have kind of where the peninsula breaks off in the Baltics. We want to form this one line here. There's good geography, a good defensive position as we build out our more properly fortified line from um, Leningrad down to Lake Gilman. Then in Peskov, I want to try to do a bit of a stopping force there to slow them down from just racing north. Right? I want to try to funnel them in this direction and stop them here. Not sure if it'll be successful, but that's the hope. And then these forces will then slowly start to pivot and withdraw south of Lake Gilman. Um, and we'll try to get some other forces here to, to help defend this as well. Then looking down in Smolensk, right, we want to... Smolensk is in the most danger most immediately, and it's also the quickest path for the German forces to continue on straight to Moscow. So we want to have great consideration for, you know, holding them at Smolensk. And honestly, Smolensk is going to be part in this red line of our fortified line that we're going to try to hold with, with great cause, right? Down south in Kiev, and this will be in episode three, creating a pocket there. The red line represents where we want to stay fortified um, as more of a static position. Yellow represents where, when we do lose a specific part of our front line, uh, where are going to be our fallback kind of beachheads, if you will, right, of great importance. So first would be north of Moscow. Here we want to get some type of line established. Also in front of Rezhev, Tula, Vorin Voronezh, Stalino, and then of course Rostov. So with that out of the way, oh, excuse me, let's hop back into the game and take a look at our first actions here. So I'm going to begin with the 22nd Rifle Corps, I think, and that's right here. It's only these two rifle divisions that belong to it. And I'm going to take the Rifle Corps and I'm going to set it up just for now behind Peskov. And then these two units, they're actually going to, to form part of the um, Peskov defense line. We're going to do that by moving the 180th rifle 
over to where the security force is. We have a couple of kind of entrenched uh, machine gun and artillery positions, and these are down near... Oh. Down near Ostrov, which we'll come back to in a moment. Uh, speaking of Ostrov, actually, let's do that now. So the 24th Rifle Corps is going to set up along this river here by Ostrov and these two air bases and try to do a bit of a stopping perimeter here. So let's take the HQ unit, and for now we're just going to move it back to this town, I think. And then we're going to take the 181st Rifle Division, and I want to move them onto Ostrov proper, and the 183rd... Hmm... I think I'm going to push them to try to get up here. So those two rifle corps are going to kind of be the defensive line that we're going to have established here in Peskov. I might revisit this and like this first mechanized division. I might put them further along the line over here, I think. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to have them go here. So now this kind of creates that line south of Peskov. We're utilizing the river to help with our defenses um, because there's not going to be much else that will stop the German forces from advancing. My hope is if they try to break through between these two hexes, one, they're going to be moving into zone of control, and then we can counterattack maybe, maybe with both of these. Um, but best case is they kind of wash up against the river here and try to push through. So there's that. Re because really, to take Peskov, their best solution is going to be to actually work around us, right? So the further south I can have the line go, the harder it will be for them to pivot and swing around us to encircle Peskov. Doing a frontal assault from this hex or even here isn't going to be very effective. Um, and this gives us a couple layers to fall back on, right? This one can fall back, this can fall back. Uh, ultimately, the 180th can fall back to Peskov, and the 182nd can move and fill in its spot. So that's kind of the game plan we've got right now for Peskov. And those two rifle corps are going to be considered part of the Leningrad front. Now, north of Peskov, right, we're talking about how we want to have this line here, and you can see how, how beneficial the geography is to us. And I don't know if we're going to be lucky enough to actually convince... Um, <laughs> to convince the German forces to try to push through here, but maybe we will. So pretty much everything that's part of the Northwestern Front today, like these security border guards, I want to move them to start building up around here. Leningrad Front is going to be going to Leningrad proper, so I'm actually just going to move you while I have you selected. I think we'll have you go there. And continuing on here, Northwestern Front. So here is an infantry unit, naval infantry unit. This is the 65th Rifle Corps. And you're part of the Northwestern Front. I don't think you have any subordinate units, do you? You do not. Okay, well we will just move you to the rears for now. We're also going to move back the Baltic Fleet Command. Here we have the 27th Army. And the 27th Army, right, it's actually kind of spread out because its HQ is down here. And then we have... Am I reading that right? Yeah, 27th Army. We have an infantry unit here and here attached to the 27th Army. The 27th Army, we're actually going to put south of Lake Ilmen. So we're going to start building out that defensive line that stretches from Lake Ilmen down to Smolensk. So I'm going to move the 27th Army. I think I'll have them form right about here. That's what my thought is right now. So I'm going to move the HQ unit up there. 
And then we'll take this motorized unit. That's going to take a while to get out of there. Northwestern Front, so you are going to continue making your way up there towards, um, is it Narva? I think it's Narva. You might have an opportunity with the pronunciation there. The Also Rifle Regiment looks like they have a delay, so we can't move them at this time. 27th Army. So you need to get down to south of Lake Gilman. Let's see if rail transport's an option for you. It is. And here's where I move the HQ. So let's see. No, I think I'm going to have the 27th Army actually sit right in and around... Um, Belki Luki, and then start to pull back from that position. So we're going to move them. Well, do I want to do that? I might hold on that decision, so for now I'm going to bring them here. Let's see what else the 27th Army has. The two rifle corps are going to stay over there. You are part of the Northwestern Front. In the Northwestern Front, I'm just going to move back entirely. We're going to move them back to... You know what, for now we're going to move them to Peskov. We'll take them off the train there. Oh, sorry for that zooming in and out so quickly. Not intended. What else do we have? You're trapped behind enemy lines. We've already moved you. So that kind of makes up the 27th Army. A lot of them stuck over here, so we're going to need rail transport to get them quickly south of Lake Gilman. Okay, so I think that takes care of all the units north. Looking down here then, we have this anti-tank battalion part of the 8th Army. But I can't actually use rail movement on you. Um, trying to think if it's going to be better to have that anti-tank group with Peskov Defensor to move them over towards Veleki Luki. I think I'll have them go up towards Peskov. I think I might group them. Let's see, anti-tank, what are you equipped with? It's 85 millimeter AA guns. You have pretty much a whole bunch of AA guns and then 76 millimeter anti-tank guns you only have five of. Oh boy, that's not great. So let's, let's move you here just outside of the city. Maybe set you to refit. Yeah. Not sure how much good it'll do, but we'll leave you there. Then we have the 5th Airborne. Um, in the 5th Airborne, I'm just going to get the heck out of Dodge, and I'm going to move them. I'm going to have them be our very northern, f the very northern side of south of Lake Gilman, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to move them up here. An Airborne unit right now is not going to be the best at stopping the Panzer advance, so we're going to let them retreat back a little bit and start fortifying south of Lake Gilman. Okay. Now, Leningrad front, you're going to go up towards Leningrad, as obvious as that may seem, but we'll start moving you up there. You are part of the 21st Mechanized. And you're going to be part of the defense of Elki Luki. And when we look at it, right, so the 21st Mechanized... Yeah, that makes sense, right? The 21st Mechanized are all mechanized units, these three right here. Um, I think it's going to make sense for them to be in this... Well, how do I, how do I keep it, though, so they're not easily surrounded? 
So I think we'll keep... Let's sort this out. We're going to have 112th. I'm going to move down here to this hex. The 185th mechanized. I'm going to move here north of the city. And then these tank divisions... them back here. Okay. It is just, it is feeling so sparse, and my <laughs> my nature to like to have everything kind of solved for and all of the, the details straightened out before, you know, an enemy comes rushing at you is really breaking down here because I'm looking at this going okay, well, what do I do about this now? Right, there's just not enough forces really to spread around right now. So a lot of this is going to come from, if we take a quick look at our um, reinforcements and transfers schedule. So this is all turn one stuff. So this is all already happening. But turn two, I mean, look at all of these things that come into the map or to the Soviet reserves that we'll be able to leverage just all over the place. So we're going to have to hope that a lot of these units here can fill in some of those gaps. And in turn three, again, very similar situation here, right? Uh, some Leningrad militia probably won't be so useful, but look at all these rifle divisions, right? They'll become available in the reserves. It's kind of unfortunate as it looks like they're going to come in with just 5,200 men. So let's see. And then all of these units I'm going to leave here just as a bit of a slowing force because they have to take this... Um, this double-sided rail line north of Rajev is so critical, as is where it splits here and goes through Smolensk. So we're going to let them just hold that. And what else do I have here? The 62nd Rifle Corps. Where do we want you to go? 62nd Rifle Corps. I think I might, and let's see just what else you have in your composition. So, looks like you have three rifle divisions. I might have them fill in kind of this northern line north of Smolensk. I think that might make sense. So let's have the HQ go here. And then we'll start moving up these infantry units. So they can kind of be between Leky Luki and Smolensk. Here we have the 51st Rifle Corps. I think you're going to go to Smolensk. Let's see what else we've got. No, actually, you're up by Lucky Luki, it looks like. Yeah, you are. So I just need to get you north there. So let's have you go right here. And then you can kind of be the south edge of Lucky Luki. 22nd Army. You can move back here for now. Border guard for the northwestern front. I just want to move north towards Leningrad. Okay, so I think that clears out everything here. It's not great, but you can see we're starting to get some of that line that we were talking about, right? We've got some up there, we've got Peskov, now we need to do in front of Smolensk, and we already kind of start with the line in front of Smolensk here with um, the 25th Rifle Corps and the 34th Rifle Corps. So now the question is how we deploy these most effectively around Smolensk, because I don't want to be so far in front of Smolensk that I'm simply... Um, I, I don't have an opportunity to withdraw and have kind of a second layer, right? We also have some rifle divisions that are part of Stavka that will probably 
redistribute to these, to the 19th Army. Yeah, I think that'll make sense. So really the 19th Army is what's holding this together around Smolensk. So let's take our two rifle core units back here. So let's, let's toggle the chips here and see. There's not really a river right here, and this is where they're going to come because they're going to want these two rail lines. But then these open plains also makes it easier for the Panzer Divisions to get in and around us. And if you think back to our map, right, we're going to run from Smolensk down to Aral, so we also need to think about what exists here between Smolensk and Aral. Although I'm a little less worried about that, because for them to break through here, it implies they have now gone further east than Smolensk and then decided to turn north. A possibility, sure, but it's not one of the more direct routes. So what I'm thinking is... We maybe form a line here. That's just in the open. I hate having to defend that in the open like that. I think we might have to, though. So let's take you here, you here, you can go north there, you can actually stay right where you are. You all move there. You can go there. Let's take maybe the 152nd down here. And then we're going to take like these mechanized divisions here and the armor here. Have a rifle unit there. I don't know if we're going too far south here with the line if I move you down. But I also don't want them just coming right through here. I think we might just have you go here for now. Here's another tank division. So my thought here is we can use those mechanized units for some type of potential counterattack if they break through in any one of these areas here. But by having this kind of every other staggered approach to break, they can either fight through our unit or they will have to go in between, costing them incredible amount of movement points because they're within our zone of control of multiple units even. Yeah, I think I like how this is set up here. And then the 62nd Rifle Corps, you were moving. Where were you going again? You were going north of Smolensk here to begin. Yeah, you're going to begin our defensive line south of Lake Gilman, if I remember correctly. Which you can still do there. And actually, I might move. I'm debating having these guys kind of go right here. We'll see how this plays out still. I'll let that sit for a moment. Okay. Over here, we have this rifle division with 234 men, so a lot of good you're going to do us. Let's just get you back to Smolensk. No, we can't because you're depleted. So we'll have you go here. OK. 
Okay. So in my in my head, this is now kind of the Moscow and Leningrad fronts maneuvered into some semblance of a position. Um, in the next episode, we'll continue here with the Voronezh front, which will encompass these armies, and we'll continue building out the line here from Smolensk through Orel, through Kursk, through Kharkov. And here we're going to have more time because we're not going to try to save Kiev. Kiev will have a token force there, but again. We're, we're just going to let it be. Um, and it, the Ukraine is so much more difficult to defend in my mind because it's all of this open plain, which just so greatly benefits Army Group South's panzer units. Whereas at the very least in our Moscow and Leningrad fronts, you can see all this forestation, rivers, etc. The geography is to our benefit, right? So that takes care of those movement positions. Now let's take a look and see in these two pockets what we want to do in terms of the withdrawal of our units. Um, now it would be so nice to say, oh, well, let's just all move them back and we're going to break out. I don't know that that's an, a realistic possibility. I, I really don't. So in a sense, part of this is going to be exercise in placing our units in defensive positions that would be the most painful for the Germans to either spend the time surrounding us and kind of dwindling our supplies, or to, to have good defensive odds then increase the casualty rate of our opponent. Now here we have a whole bunch of HQs that just can't move into enemy hexes, so they, they certainly can't break out here. Here we have a security unit where either way we go, we're moving into a zone of control, a Riga, and we have another security unit here. So... Looking at the situation, I don't see a possibility necessarily for us to break out. So, I think, oh my gosh, ammunition 18%, really 15. So much for guerrilla fighting for a while. Um, hmm. So here we have an actual rifle division, 10,000 men, and almost no ammunition. So we're going to move this security unit down here. We're going to move this rifle division up here. And then we're going to take these HQs and move them back here. And we'll move this security unit back here. I mean, they, this is pretty simple, guys, right? They they don't really have a chance. Um, so what we're going to do is just try to make it a little more painful for them to connect to these cities, to take the rail lines, all of these good things. Um, I wonder if you border guards can share your ammunition here. Let's bring you back here. Get the security force there. Here we have a rifle division. So I think I'm just going to move you back here. This tank division, it's a long shot, but I'm going to try to break you out by going north here, and maybe you can reconnect with these forces. You just both have to stay there. Then we get to this pocket, which is a little more interesting because there's so much, but they're also so much further away from having any chance of breaking out. I just don't see a lot of ways we're going to be able to push through. But I think we might try to at least put some pressure on them trying to contain us. And the further we move away from the bulk of this force, the more movement and combat prep and fatigue these guys will endure chasing us. Right, whereas if we do just try to hold the line right here, look at our defensive values, one, one, two, two, it, it's not going to do anything against them. So let's at least make them chase us, right? That, that's going to be our philosophy here. Actually, I do wonder if maybe I get to that city. No, I don't think so. Back to the methodology here. Chase, make them chase. Make them go through the swamps. That's what we're going with. So move 
move back these HQ units here. This rifle division come up here. That rifle division will go the same stack. You will do the same. The security force will kind of run in a sense interference for that infantry unit. Two HQ units are just going to come up here. This tank division is going to have you take that hex. Move them up. Yeah, I think we'll have this rifle division go here. Now, here. Just to try to slow them down a little. Over here, the tank division. Because we're in a zone of control, you can't quite make it out. Making them chase. That's the name of the game. Okay. So I think that's as ideal as we can look forward to there. With these two pockets and trying to get out. We're going to have a lot more to do in episode three, considering the size of this pocket and the number of forces we have to move back. The good news is it should be a little more orderly. Um, and we're going to go and do a lot more rail transport to the rear of the line um, to more quickly get into those positions and kind of set up. And here's one of the things to remember, right? By using rail transport and retreating to the back, I don't really care about the rail capacity to bring supplies up here to the front line where the Germans are now, because it's a certainty that next week the Germans will occupy that rail hex. So I don't care about trying to get supplies up there. I care about taking these men and, and not having these armies surrounded. That is most important. The fewer armies that the, so the German player can surround and eliminate off the map, the more successful we will be as the Soviet player. Um, because we just have to play the game of attrition. We have to survive longer than the German player does. And I almost ended this a bit prematurely because there are actually units behind Smolensk that we still need to allocate. Um, so let's do that here. So we've got the 7th Mechanized, which is part of the 28th Army. So what is the 28th Army in Compass? The 7th Mechanized and whatever this is. No, that's separate. So the 69th and the 61st Rifle Corps. I am going to use them. Hmm. I'm going to use them to build my fortification south of Lake Gilman. And I'm going to take this stack of units, the 7th Mechanized and the 28th Army, to reinforce Smolensk. So let's move down the HQ unit. This tank division will move here. Seventh mechanized can come down. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll take your part of 41st Rifle Corps. I think I'm going to move both of you towards Smolensk. Let's move you there, you there. Select both of you. Do I have enough for rail transport? I do. Let's move both of you down there. The HQ unit now can come up. And then I'm going to reassign 41st Rifle Corps to... 28th Army. 
All right. Yeah, now we're going to take you guys to build this wall to the south of Lake Gilman. Trying to think if I want to move them by rail here. I think I do. Okay, there's that. There we go. So you will form a line here, you will go north of them, and then we have that airborne up there at the very southmost tip of Lake Gilman. And then we'll focus on reinforcements that come in. And once they do break through Peskov and such of, of building out the line here north of Lake Gilman. Now the one thing that decision leaves me wondering is, have I left Smolensk too weak? Does Smolensk defend, deserve more of a defense? Um, I'm going to be optimistic here and, and hope that I have enough. And then the second question is, between Smolensk and Aryol, do I have enough of a line? And I think I'm going to have to... You, you viewers familiar with my Stalingrad to Berlin campaign are familiar with me doing this a shuffle of forces north to south on, along the front. I might take more of these forces here to put in between Smolensk and Aryol. Um, and then continue that pattern all the way down the line, leaving the southmost of our flank down by Odessa and Rostov, etc., a little bit more exposed than I may have liked. But I think it will be more important to defend Smolensk, Aryol, and this entire line than it will um, the, the Dnieper River here in these towns. So yeah. Let's take a quick look at the reserve box, actually, see what's there. So, we have a bunch of rifle divisions that we can't transfer because they just arrived, which makes sense from looking at the reinforcement schedule. But these are going to be a lot of rifle divisions that we can deploy right away to help fill in some of those gaps. We even have some mechanized units here. So I'm, I'm hopeful that I can get these in deployed towards, say, Rezhev, or even deploy them directly to Smolensk um, if they don't advance too much in turn two. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling a little optimistic about that, seeing that there's so many rifle divisions that should be available next turn, I hope. I wonder if it tells me anywhere here what turn they unlock. I would assume it's just next turn because they arrived this turn. That's my hope, at least. Okay. Well, that'll do it for this episode. As always, guys, thanks so much for giving the series a watch, a listen. If you have any questions, feedback, or comments, please add them to the comment section below, and I will do my best to get to them. And with that, Strategy Gamers, hoping you all have an excellent day. Bye now.